so we'll see how it goes being on YouTube. Okay, all right. As I mentioned, we're talking today about new beginnings. And when I was thinking about what to say, I remembered my son, Andrew. Most of you here know Drew. He goes by Drew now. When he was going to enter the third grade, and Logan, what grade are you going to go in? Are you in now? I'm in first grade. You're in first grade. Okay, so he was a couple years older than you. And school was going to start, and he said one day, and this still breaks my heart, he said, I wish I could start the new school year in a different school so no one would know me. You see, Andrew got in trouble a lot at school. He wasn't a bad kid, I'm, I'm his mother. He was a good kid, but he couldn't keep his mouth shut. And he was always getting in trouble at school. And the other thing is Andrew was very, very truthful. And so if there was something that happened, the principal said, I could always go to Andrew and he would tell the truth. But often this meant he got in trouble too because sometimes he was in the fight and they had to punish everybody that was in the fight. But Andrew said, I just wish, I wish I could start not as the troubled kid or the kid that causes trouble. I just want to start with a fresh, a fresh clean slate where the teachers haven't been talking about me. And I thought, oh, we all need this sometimes. We'd like to start with a clean slate. We'd like to change sometimes how people think about us, wipe out those words that maybe we spoke without thinking, erase that frown of disapproval that may come across our face without us wanting to when we don't like something, or get back that money that we foolishly spent at that great sale. <laughs> sometimes we'd like to undo some things. And then there are bigger things. For me, I wish I hadn't worked so many hours when my kids were little. But you know, you can't go back there. You can only learn from it. There are times that I wish I'd have said no when I said yes, and times I wish I'd have said yes when I said no. But that thinking doesn't do a whole lot of good unless we do something about it. Because my 94-year-old mother, she always says, what is, is. Those, those faithful words. What is, is. So we need to start where we are. We need to begin anew without judging our past and just kind of an acceptance of what was and a belief that we can change. As I thought about the theme for today's message, I asked some friends, what do you think about new beginnings? What does that mean to you? Well, I was out in, in California last weekend, and a young friend who's studying for the ministry, she said, New beginnings flow out of our willingness to show up in the present moment as who we are, formed by our past, but not defined by it. So it's not that we can wipe out the past, but it doesn't have to form who we are or carry, be carried around with us. So we, to begin again, we need to be willing for a fresh start. And that sounds really simple, but it isn't always, because we have all this, what we call baggage, and that's kind of a negative, usually we think about the negative part, oh, we've got all this baggage. But really, some of it's good, and some of it has gotten us through some really difficult circumstances. So, there's kind of that balance of what do we want to let go, what do we want to hang on to. And then there's some of us that have had really difficult things happen in our lives. And we didn't have any choice, but we had to change. We can think about illness, heart. We can think about divorce. We can think about separation. There are so many things that happen in our lives that we know we need to make a change at that point because life is not going to be the same. I was with a woman recently whose son committed suicide seven years ago. And it was as present to her now as it was when it happened. She was not able to put it down or let go of it. Even though she knew she needed to put it down, it defined her. She was always the mother whose son committed suicide. It was part of her identity. Now, I can't imagine what this is like, but she knew to go on, she needed to figure out how to put it down. But it was complicated because she felt if she let go of that, she was letting go of her son. 
and she needed to hang on to something. Yeah. Arthur, author Carl Bard says, although no one can go back and make a brand new start, anyone can start now and make a brand new ending. No one can go back and make a new start, but you can start now and make a new ending. I think that's, that's really wise advice because we can't change towns. Some people move. We can't change schools. Some people may be able to go to a different school. We can't change lives, but we can change ourselves internally. And God promises this. God promises to be with us. That scripture I read from today, from Matthew, it talked about when Jesus was um, selecting his first disciples. Was there anything in that that really touched you? Were there any of those words that kind of stuck with you? Maybe I need to read it again. <laughs> Let how, me read it again. How quickly they went. How quickly they went. Walking along the beach of Lake Galilee, Jesus saw two brothers, Simon, called Peter, and Andrew. They were fishing, throwing their nets into the lake. It was their regular work. Jesus said to them, come with me. I'll make a new kind of fisherman out of you. I'll show you how to catch men and women instead of perch and bass. They didn't ask questions. They simply dropped their nets and followed. And a short distance down the beach, they came upon another pair of brothers, James and John. These two were sitting in a boat with their father Zebedee, mending their fish nets. And Jesus made the same offer to them. And they were just as quick to follow, abandoning boat and father. And from there, he went all over Galilee. He used synagogues for meeting places, and he taught people the truth of God. God's kingdom was his theme, that beginning right now, they were under God's government, a good government. He also healed people of their diseases and the bad effects of their bad lives, and word got around the entire Roman province of Syria. People brought anybody with an ailment, whether mental, emotional, or physical. Jesus healed them all. More and more people came, the momentum gathering. And besides those from Galilee, crowds came from the ten towns across the lake and others from Jerusalem and Judea and others from across the Jordan. Well, I'll tell you what hit me when I read this. There were several things. Jesus said, follow me and I will make you a new fisherman. He didn't say you have to change your profession. He didn't say you have to become a minister. He didn't say, you have, he says, Take who you are and what you are, and I will make a new person. So whether you're a farmer, a teacher, a counselor, a hairdresser, Jesus isn't saying you have to change. He's saying, but with me, I can help you be a farmer maybe that brings young boys in and gives them a mentor and a guide. Or maybe you can be a teacher that is really able to reach out to kids and touch them in a special way. Or maybe you'll be a hairdresser. We have a wonderful hairdresser in town, Cindy, and she just exudes love when she's taking care of you and doing your hair, and you feel it. It doesn't have to be big things. That, that really hit me. He, he made them a different kind of fisherman, but they still did their regular work. The other thing was the message that God's kingdom begins right here and now. It's beginning now. It's, we're not talking about God's kingdom after death, which we often think about. It's now. It's present. And he healed diseases and bad effects of their bad lives. But wasn't we often think, oh, he did all these physical healings. But he also healed people of the bad effects of their lives. And to me, the most important part, Jesus healed one and all. He didn't say, okay, what do you believe? And then I'm going to heal you. He healed them all. Another friend, in talking about new beginnings, said, we all know in the background of our mind what we need to do. It's just so hard to know where to start. Well, this is the prayer and the listening of that still, small voice that are important. On the back of your bulletin, I put some quotes. And I think, to me, these are very important to just look at when you get a chance and spend some time thinking about it. But that first one can be your prayer. This is a prayer when you want to start. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Keep that one. That's so, so important. Sometimes 
we talked about we have to change. We don't have, have any choice. But sometimes what we want to do is we want to hang on to our grudges against other people. And this is what Andrew was concerned about. He didn't want those teachers carrying over from the previous year what they thought about him. So not over did it, I want to talk about our own new beginnings, but the gift of giving someone else a new beginning through our forgiveness and our forgetting. When we hold things over people's heads, that's one of the most difficult and hurtful things we can do. So too, if we can let it go and let it down and not carry those things that people have hurt us, because we do bad things to one another, but we don't have to carry those and we can allow them to have a new beginning in their relationship with us. And we do know, again from what we read in the scripture, that God washes us white as snow. So it's not God that's carrying these grudges or this anger or thinking that we're not good enough. God loves us all, one and all, just the same, and offers us this forgiveness and to wash us white as snow. So the next step is to forgive yourself and allow yourself the freedom to change. You know, today we're going to share communion. And I'm glad that the first Sunday of the new church year we always share communion because this is an important part of new beginnings. And that's really what communion is all about. When we come to this table and share communion, that's that opportunity to let go of those things you don't want to hang on to. Leave them at the table. You take the bread and you take the wine and you take in the love and the wisdom of God. But first, we kind of need to clean out some of those things that we carry and leave them at the table. You know, the disciples that Jesus chose, they were perfect people. Peter, that first one we talked about, would later deny Jesus three times on the night that he was captured. There was Judas, who totally betrayed Jesus. There was Thomas, who doubted. Even after he'd spent all this time with Jesus, even after Jesus rose from the dead, Thomas still doubted. And Jesus loved these disciples just as Jesus loves us. So the important thing, and I love that, that image, when Jesus shared the first Holy Supper, the first time at the Passover, he washed the feet of every disciple. And Jesus had an advantage. Not only did he know what they'd done in the past, he knew what they were going to do in the future, too. He knew, but he still washed everyone's feet. I believe if Jesus were here today, he would wash all of our feet and say, Come, you are accepted just as you are. Come, lay down your burdens. Pick up a new beginning. That one thing in your life that you would like to change or do differently, and I will help you every step of the way. I want to share the words from the Gospel of Luke, the institution of the Lord's Supper. When the hour came, he took his place at the table and the apostles with him. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat of it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And then he took a cup. And after giving thanks, he said, take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And then he took bread. And he broke it. And he gave thanks. And he said to them, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he did the same with the cup after supper, saying, This cup is poured out for you in the new covenant of my blood. 
So whatever you want to leave at the table, please leave it. And whatever you want to pick up, and whatever strength you want to receive from these gifts, I pray that you may do that today.